Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd ahabati fillah may Allah bless you and have mercy upon you and bless us all and bless us all with ikhlas with thabat ala sunnah al nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from kufr, shirk and zandaka and going backwards in our deen but may Allah bless us to go forward adhering to kitab illa wa sunnah al rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ameen ya Rabbil Alameen Continue on our study of Asulu Thalatha, Hafidhukum Allah. We reached a portion of the treaties where Imam Muhammad ibn al Wahhab was speaking about the, the Asla Thani, and this means that this is the second thing from amongst the three things that will be asked in the grave. And remember, the questions in the graves, according to the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, will be Man Rabbuk, who is your Lord? Ma Dinak, and what is your religion? Woman Nabiak, and who is your prophet? So we hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses us to be of those who answer those questions uh, properly and has comfort in our graves. And may Allah bless us all and our families with Jannah to Fardos and guidance for our non Muslim families and guidance to the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, for our Muslim families. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. So Imam Muhammad Ahmad Wahhab, Rahimahullah ta'ala. In the second asl, which is the deen, uh, knowing or understanding the religion of Islam with its textual proofs, we read a portion of the treatise where he said, Dalil a shahadati, shah, Dalil a shahadati anna Muhammad Rasulullah, Qoluhu ta'ala, Laka ja'akum rasulim min anfusikum azizun alayhi ma'anattum harisun alaykum bil mu'mineen rawful rahim. Where the Imam said, he said, and the evidence for the Shahada that Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a statement of Allah the Almighty where he says, Verily there has come to you a Messenger from amongst yourselves. It grieves him that you should receive any injury or difficulty. He is anxious, uh, you know, he is anxious over you or he's a guardian over you or, or striving to uh, to give you guidance so that you will be rightly guided to repent to Allah and beg him to pardon and forgive your sins in order that you may enter paradise and be saved from the punishment of the hellfire for the believers he is a full he is full of pity kindness and merciful so this lets us know the nature of the of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and that we may, when we make the shahada, we should bear witness to this fact, and we should know and understand that Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was sent as a mercy to mankind. And then the Imam said, "Wa ma'ana shahada in the Muhammad Rasulullah ta'atuhu fi ma amr wa tasdikuhu fi ma akhbar wa jtinab ma naha anhu wa zajr wa ala ya'budu wa ala ya'budu Allah illa bima shara." So the implication of the testimony of the the testimony to the message of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that he is the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is that one obeys him sallallahu alaihi wasallam in all that he ordered believes him in all that he informed refrains from all that which he prohibited and that Allah is not to be worshiped except through what he sallallahu alaihi wasallam legislated meaning what he conveyed Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So that shows us the importance of the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the wa makana to sunnah. That the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is to be followed and to strive our utmost to follow his sunnah alayhi salatu wa sallam and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us of our many, 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 many shortcomings for not following the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So with that, ahabatifillah, it shows us the importance. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wa ati Allah wa ati Rasul. And obey Allah and obey His Messenger. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the fact that we know and understand, or how do we know and understand that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, not should not only should he be followed, but that his sunnah is legislated, and that what goes against his sunnah which is bid'ah, is unacceptable. How do we know that? Do we know that because, because uh, Ahlul Sunnah said it? Do we know it only because the, the Salaf al Saleh, they said it, and they practiced it, and they and all those ahkam that they uh, practice with regards to how to deal with Ahlul Bid'ah, is it from them? 
Or does it come from Allah or Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Listen to the hadith of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha qalat, سَمِعْتُ قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ مَنْ أَحْتَثَ فِي أَمْرِنَا هَذَا مَا لَيْسَ مِنْهُ فُهُ الرَّدْ وَفِي رُوَائِتِ لِمُسْلِمْ مَنْ عَمَلَ عَمَلَ لَيْسَ لَيْهِ أَمْرُنَا فُهُ الرَّدْ The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said is that in the hadith of Aisha أُمَّنَا أُمَّنَا عَيْشَةَ رضي الله تعالى عنها that she said the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said whoever innovates in this fair of ours will have it rejected and in another narration whoever uh, does an innovation or practice an innovation in this affair of ours will have it rejected. Letting us know that bid'ah, whether you practice it, whether you start it, that all of it is rejected. Because there is no bid'ah hasan, as they say. This is a istilah from Umar radiallahu ta'ala an, referring to, in fact, reviving something of the sunnah. And his bid'ah lughuwi he was referring to, not bid'ah as far as something new in the religion that did not have an asl, did not have an origin in the religion. But in fact, this is in reference to that which already the Prophet ﷺ did, but then the people were not doing, so he revived this sunnah of the Messenger of Allah ﷺ. Because if you were to bring something new in the religion regarding ibadah, regarding worship, then it's rejected. And this is what the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam shows, illustrates for us. And this is what the Salaf al Saleh they illustrated and practiced up until now. This is what the ulama of Islam, that this is how they understood Islam and how they practiced Islam and how they preserved Islam. And so, Habitifillah, these are the things that it entails when we bear witness that Muhammad is the last prophet and messenger, that we obey him in what he ordered, that we believe in him in what he informed us of, that we refrain from that which he prohibited us from, and that Allah is not to be worshipped except through what he legislated. That brings up, ahabatifillah, the what? The shurut of ibadah. The shurut ibadah, meaning the conditions for worship are two. And those two conditions are, first, ikhlas, that you must worship Allah with sincerity, without shirk. The second pillar is that you must worship Allah with sincerity in accordance with the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how he prayed. I mean, how he worshiped. So, for example, if we take the prayer, for example, if you have sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but you decide, hey, I want more ajr. This is from your intellect. You say, I want more ajr. So I, instead of uh, fajr praying two rakat, I'm going to pray two, three or four for the fajr prayer. When it's legislated that the Prophet Sallallahu he prayed rakatan. He prayed two units of prayer. But you decide, you believe you're going to get more ajr, so you decide to pray three rakat or four thinking that you're going to get more ajr because you're doing it with sincerity. You love Allah. You worship Allah. You, you, you have humility before your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. It will be rejected because it is not in accordance with the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and that is implying that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's ibadah wasn't sufficient for you. That you felt you could get more ajr but in fact you will not get more ajr. You will get sin for committing bid'ah. So, this is very imperative that we understand that, that those two conditions must be in place for our worship. Then the Imam said, the evidence for prayer and the zakat and the interpretation of Tawheed is a saying of Allah, which means, it is the verse in Surah Al-Bayyinah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and they were commanded not but that they should worship Allah and worship none but Him alone and perform prayers and give zakat and that is the right religion. That is the straight path. The evidence for fasting is a saying of Allah which means, يَا يُلَذِينَ آمَنُوا كُتُبَ عَلَيْكُمْ سِيَامَ كَمَا كُتُبَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلَكُمْ لَعَلَكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ The evidence for fasting is a saying of Allah which means, O oh, you who believe, observing, uh, observe the fast 
or fasting is prescribed for you as it was prescribed for those before you that you may become pious. That is the, the key to taqwa. That's how we can gain taqwa by fasting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in accordance with how the son, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did it. So that way we get that ibadah accepted. And then he said, with the little hajj and the evidence for hajj, he said, is the verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, fi kitab al kareem walillahi ala nasi hajj al bayt min istata'a ilayhi sabila. وَمَنْ كَفَرَ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَنِيٌ عَلَى الْعَالَمِينَ It is a verse of Allah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And hajj to the house is a duty that mankind owes to Allah. Those who can afford the expenses, uh, those for those who, who can afford or those who are able to do so. And whoever d d uh, disbelieves or rejects this hajj, or rejects uh, whoever disbelieves that Allah stands not in need of any of his creation. Then we reach the second level of Islam. al-Iman. sitta and to mena billahi wal malaikati wa kutubihi wa rasulihi wal yawm al akhir wa to mena bi qadri khayrihi wa shar the second level is iman this is the second level of islam is what it is iman and this rank has more than 70 levels the highest of which is to utter the two testimonies this is the highest level of of uh, of iman is to utter the testimonies of faith meaning and believing in it, of course. And the lowest being the removal of harmful objects from the paths of people. So removing something harmful, a thorn from the road, uh, something that's blocking the road, something like this. These are, that's, that's one of the lowest level, but it shows us that something as simple as removing a pebble from the walkway or something which someone could fall on or, or something, that this is a part of Iman. Letting us know that Iman is also actions. It's a statement of the tongue, and it is actions of the limbs, and it is actions of the heart, the belief in the heart. And then he said, and bashfulness is one of its branches, meaning one of the branches of Iman is shyness. And then he says, this rank has six pillars, believing in Allah, his angels, his books, his messengers, the hereafter, divine decree... Uh, and preordainment, both its good and its evil. And this comes from the pillars of, of Iman, which comes from the hadith of uh, Jibreel, the hadith uh, of Umar, radiallahu ta'ala an. And the evidence for the six pillars is the saying of Allah, which means, this is from, from the Quran, لَيْسَ الْبِرَّ تُوَلُّ وَجُوكُمْ كِبْلَ الْمَشْرِكِ وَالْمَغْرِبِ وَلَكِنَ الْبِرَّ مَنْ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَمَلَائِكَةِ وَالْكِتَابِ وَالنَّبِيِّينَ Dalil from the Quran about the six pillars of Iman. Iman is the statement of Allah where Allah says, it is not from bir, bir. It is not from piety. Uh, that you turn your faces towards east and west in prayers, but al-bir is believing in Allah, the last day, the angels, the books, and the prophets. That's Iman. The arkan al-Iman. Those pillars of Iman. And then he said, with the al Qadr, the, the evidence for the, the decree of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitab al kareem in kull shayin khalaqnahu bi qadr. Verily, every thing we have created uh, with uh, that it is uh, preordained, you know, that it is written in a preserved template. And then the third level of uh, of uh, Islam is Ihsan. And Al-Ihsan, Ruk and Wahid, and it has one pillar. And this comes from the Hadith of Jibreel. And this is the beauty. The Hadith of Jibreel contains evidence for all of this. This is from the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi and we'll come to that when we get to that relevant portion of the treaties. And so he said, this third level of Islam is, is Ihsan. 
And this rank has only one pillar, which is worshiping Allah as though you see him. And while you don't see him, truly he sees you. That's a high level of, uh, of, uh, of, of ihsan, you know, of iman. That's a high level of Islam, a high level of Islam, uh, uh, of iman, is that you worship Allah as if you see him. And knowing full well that you can't see him, knowing that he sees you, that, that would keep you away from sinfulness. That will have you having humility and khushur in your ibadah. And that will help you keep sincerity in your ibadah. And away from showing off and away from foolishness. Because the person who reaches that level of ibadah and iman, did they worship Allah? With, uh, in the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should be worshipped. And they ha that is a high level. As the Prophet sallallahu said, Al-Ihsan, in ta'badullah ka innaka tara fa in lam tukun tarahu fa innu yiraq. That it is to worship Allah as if you see him and you cannot see him but know that he sees you, subhanahu wa ta'ala. <laughs> The evidence for this is the statement, the saying of Allah, which means, Inna allaha ma alladheena taqu wa alladheena hum muhsinun. Truly Allah is with those who fear Him and do their duty to Him and those who are muhsinun. And He subhanahu wa ta'ala also said, Wa tawakal ala aziz al-raheem, alladhi yiraka heena tukum. Wa tuqallibuka fi sajideen, innuhu huwa sami'u al-aleem. And also the statement where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Neither you, meaning the Prophet وسلم, do any deed nor recite any portion of the Quran, nor you, mankind, do any deed, but we are a witness thereof when you are doing it. And nothing is hidden from your Lord on the earth or in the heaven, nor what is less than that or what is greater than that. But it is written, in a clear record, letting us know every all of our deeds are recorded, the good and the bad. May Allah bless us with good and forgive us of our evil. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Then the evidence, then he got to the evidence of the sunnah. And I think we'll save that to the next sitting to get to the dalil for Iman, Wal Ihsan, Wal Islam in the Hadith of Jibreel, which is very long. And we'll save that for the next sitting. We ask Allah the Almighty. To accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam. Ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.